Dear Father in Heaven, please give me help this morning as I share a thought or two. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in the Philippines, it took a lot of adjustment. But we got into a, a routine. What we would do is we'd uh, get on a little bus in the morning, drop us off at a dirt road. At the end of the day, you know, sometimes loaded with pineapple and jackfruit and different things because the people there were so poor but so generous. So we'd walk down the mountain carrying all this fruit, and it was, uh, it was good days there. You know, what we did is kind of, we were feeling our way through. You know, I wasn't sure how to approach it because this is my first time. We, uh, we offered health consultations, especially the blood pressure checks, people like that, because they never had their blood pressure taken. We'd offer blood pressure checks, and then we'd talk about health. Usually they had some kind of health issue, There's, and they had usually high blood pressure, diabetes, or something. So we talked a lot about health. And then Kathleen, here's a picture of Kathleen. Now the lady with the, the sunshine on her shirt, she was just one of the people we'd visited, and she said, can I go with you and listen to your health information? So we said, sure. So she would come along and go with us. But Kathleen's on the end, talk about health for a while, then Kathleen would pull out her guitar. She would carry it up and down to the mountain every day. She would pull out her guitar and she would sing spiritual songs. It was, it was the gospel in music. And people loved it. And they would sing along with her. She would teach them to sing. And then after a little bit of health interchange, after a few songs, we'd offer to study the Bible. And I don't think anybody ever said no. I mean, we studied the Bible with, we were studying with 30 families at the end of that first year. So this is what we would do. Now that was our, our daytime ministry up in the mountains, back home at our, uh, at our house out over the river. Darlene was beginning to see people that had, you know, needs. This is the first patient. The lady with the blue and white shirt on, she came and it was, a, it was an eye-opener. It was a shocker because she showed Darlene a tumor on her breast. I think she had breast cancer. Now, we were prepared to do nutritional counseling, you know, give a little charcoal, you know, a hot foot bath, a poultice. You know, people were coming with serious issues. And we had to, you know, we had to pray a lot and wasn't sure what to do. But, you know, the Lord always gave us answers to our prayers. And we began to, uh, to work at home out of the house. In fact, up in the mountains, after a, a short time, Kathleen was becoming very adept, very skilled at giving the Bible studies. You know, we just had to start things off and she could do the rest. Same with the, uh, the health counseling. She was able to give the same counsel Darlene would give. And uh, after a while, Kathleen would write the prescription, you know, for the good diet and the exercise, et cetera, et cetera. Write the prescription before Darlene would even say it. When we came to the Philippines, when we went there, we had a ticket for one year. Because when you bought the ticket, you could have an open-ended return date, but not it couldn't exceed one year. So that's what we had. And as the year drew to a close, we started, you know, thinking about it might be best to go back to Wildwood and leave the work here in the hands of the people. So we had an interesting experience because just before we left, we invited all the people that we were studying the Bible with to come to a, a, a meeting they were having on the beach, a big church meeting. And most of them came. We rented a jeepney. Now here's a picture of a jeepney. It's like an opened, uh, it's like a bus, but the, the sides are open. And so we rented a jeepney, and all the people came, went down, had a nice day together, good fellowship. Now, as I walk in the morning, here's a feather I found. It's so small, it's even hard to see. That's a very small feather. And then, you know, then I was out walking the other day, and I saw another feather. This is a little bigger than the small one. And then another day I was walking, I found another feather. This one, this one's huge. But you know, they all came from birds. <laughs> You know, they're all birds. In people, uh, Acts 17, 26, God made all nations of one blood. Even though some are tall, some are short, some are, you know, they, some have different facial features. Some have different, even the, the, what do you call it, cultural differences. The one in Mexico may eat tortillas. Here, here I eat bread in Tennessee. In Pakistan, they eat chapatis.
It's still, you know, it's outward, it's cultural things, it's physical appearance. But you know, the heart, all the hearts are the same. Now, the breakthrough came for me in that last weekend when we invited those folks to come down to that convention, the, the big meeting for the church, because they all came. Now, they weren't church members, but I've been studying the Bible for months with these families. They came down, we had a nice day together, and as uh, we were leaving, the, the, the jeepney was going to take them back to the mountain, and it dropped me off there in the city, darling. I was staying just outside the city. And as I got off the jeepney, you know, I told them we were leaving on Monday or Tuesday. And I looked inside the jeepney, and all these faces, you know, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 people were staring back at me. And, you know, and the Lord had given me a love for these people. I finally gotten past the outside because, you know, you had the language challenge, all the, 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 the cultural differences. But when you finally get past that and you see, you know, everything is the same. They have the same the wants, the desires, they're able to show compassion. The inward, the inward heart is just the same as mine. And that was like a breakthrough. And, you know, we work in many countries after that and finally could see that all the people and all the places on planet Earth were the same. And one gospel reaches the heart of all. John 12, 32, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. That's what Jesus said, all men unto me. And I can see the gospel that helped me is the same gospel that would help them. So it was a breakthrough. And they were very sad we were leaving, but you know, we got on the plane, went back home, and uh, it's interesting, as the plane was landing back in the States, as it was landing, the Lord spoke right to my heart. I couldn't believe it. And he said, you know, you're going right back. And I told Darlene, and I think it broke her heart. But we got back to Wildwood. I told our president there, Wilbur Atwood, I said, I got to go back. And uh, before long, we packed up. We were going back to the Philippines. But this time, we were going to be engaging in holding health evangelism schools. And I figured that's our niche. That's something that we can do. So we'd have classes on Christian administration, Daniel Revelation, last day events. We'd have all these different classes that, that that's something we could do. It wasn't common to find people there in that country that would teach classes on hydrotherapy and physical therapy, all these things. And we did. We went back. First uh, schools on the island, it was called Sikior. I think it meant the island of the witches or something. We had 35 students and uh, had took three or four folks from Wildwood as part of the staff. And that was, uh, that was their school. And you know, the Lord blessed. And when we left, our hearts broke as we said goodbye to the students because we'd been staying in the same house. We lived together, we studied together, we worshiped together, we ate together, and uh, it was hard to leave. So I remember the last morning as we were getting packed up, getting ready to leave. It was four in the morning on the island of Sikihor. We had to take a bus to a, a pier and take a boat to another city and on that city, get a plane to the capital, change planes, the plane back to L.A., and then I'm changing another couple planes to get home. And as I was sitting there, out there four in the morning, the moon shining, the stars in the sky, it just seemed so impossible that I'd ever get home. It was such a long road to get home. I thought, uh, you know, it's just we'll never make it. But, you know, we got on the bus, and we got on the boat, we got on the planes, and after, I think, uh, two and a half days, we finally made it home. And uh, sometimes I, I feel that way about heaven. I think heaven is so far away. It seems like such a long road to get home. My dear friends, by God's grace, we'll get there. Let's keep walking that narrow way. And one day the Savior will come. He'll take us to a place where we'll never cry, never hurt, never suffer. We don't want to miss it. So God bless you, my friends. You have a nice day. Soon after we got to the Philippines, I, I was so stressed and worried. And one thing I was worried about was my sister. We're very close. And um, 
when we when we left, she cried and cried and I cried. And I told the Lord, you know, I said, I'm willing to go to the Philippines, Lord, but please take care of my sister. We had not lived far apart all of our lives. And um, we got there and it was very difficult to communicate back and forth. Back then there was no internet for us. There were no cell phones there. And so it took us three weeks to get a letter from my sister. And when I wrote her back, it took two weeks for her to get it. So it was a five week turnaround. And so we had been there for a few weeks and we're riding back and forth. She wrote me every day and I wrote her pretty much every day. And then I got this letter and I started reading it and I just started crying. It was from, from my sister. And she said that she had been, uh, it was the fall of the year and she had been burning leaves or she was going to burn leaves for one of our elderly cousins. So she had raked the leaves and she had um, just put them in a pile. So she carefully poured regular gasoline over the whole pile. And then she leaned over it and dropped a match into the middle. It exploded and she said that she just quickly had visions in her mind of being burned to death, of being scarred for life, um, being in the hospital. And she didn't feel any heat. She felt the explosion and then ashes raining down on her. And when she raised up, her face wasn't hot. She had not even one hair on her head was singed, not an eyebrow, not anything. And she wrote me that and as I was reading it, I started crying because I hadn't gotten to the end and I thought she's writing me from the hospital um, that, you know, she's been burned. And I just wept even more when I got to the end when she told me what happened because I knew the Lord had fulfilled that promise to me that He was, he was faithful. He would be faithful. He was taking care of my sister and He was taking care of us. And I just can testify to that that the Lord is faithful.